Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we're talking about another example of how Hollywood is running out of ideas. So they're turning to making yet another woke reboot of a beloved media property from the recent past, despite this strategy failing time and time again, of course. This trend is happening for a number of reasons that are combining too, and making it happen a multitude of times recently, repeatedly, despite again, as I said, almost always failing. First, there's the growing levels of woke PC, pro-social justice warrior politics, out there today, which are a big factor. And these left-leaning politics have been inflamed and overbloated in the public in reaction to Trump winning the presidency back in 2016. Also, a small number of entertainers and public figures, like yours truly, have begun to stand up to the liberal establishment as well. But as I said, our speaking out and taking of stands has really started to embolden the left, making them get more extreme, ridiculous, and out of control, as you'll soon see. Then, when you combine this culture war with the growing relevance of the internet and particularly streaming media and websites, well, this is what's causing such a fire sale of sorts to happen now. And it's what's causing the networks to rehash, reboot, and destroy previously beloved TV shows and films. Streaming websites like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and newer Disney Plus and Apple TV services, well, they're starving for content right now, which is making it start to seem like they will greenlight everything they can think of. Not unlike the jokes South Park made about Netflix in one of their episodes about two years ago. If you don't remember, the South Park joke basically went like this. There was this episode where the boys were trying to make their own TV show based on their superhero characters that they dress up as for fun. When they called Netflix about the idea, a guy would answer the phone saying, this is Netflix, you're greenlit, who am I speaking to? Greenlit basically means that they're picking up your show idea and they're going to make it. And the joke here is so funny because Netflix was obviously greenlighting anyone who would call them before they even knew who they were or what the show idea was. And and well, while this joke was made back in 2017, it's probably even more relevant now since so many other new streaming services have popped up, like the ones I already listed before and another new one that's called Peacock, which will be NBC's new streamer. This finally brings us to today's news story because the new woke reboot we're talking about is going to be premiering on NBC's Peacock and it's going to be a revival of the show Saved by the Bell and it's going to star a very alphabet person named Josie Tota. Apparently Tota came out as T in 2018. And surprise, surprise, that's done wonders for their career, now making them a headline and the new star of a new woke TV show in 2020. People wonder why so many are coming out and claiming to be alphabet people these days. Well, this is a big reason why. Not only will it get you extra attention and special treatment, but also it can get you lots of jobs, premier positions, and extra cash too. This has actually already been happening on YouTube for years too. Since this platform is easier to break into and it's been overly surprising, supporting and propping up alphabets for years. And now streaming service shows are next, which some might say is just an in-between step before this starts happening more and more in network TV and in film. We've already gone over a number of examples of this over the years too, but two recent ones I can think of off the top of my head are things like the Lady Reboot of Fight Club, which was announced a few weeks back, or the mostly girl-led, very woke sequel series of Watchmen, which just finished its first season on HBO a few weeks ago too. But as these recent similar woke example show, it's mostly been just about getting minorities and women into leading roles, usually by way of lady rebooting or black or girl washing other parts. With that in mind, it looks like this new Saved by the Bell show we're talking about could be taking it to the next level too since it's sort of a lady reboot and it's also an alphabet one as well. Before we get to that news story more though, let's talk about the original Saved by the Bell show, series, and legacy and reflect on just how monumental and influential it actually was back in the day. Saved by the Bell was an American TV sitcom that aired on NBC from 1989 to 1993, a retooling of the Disney Channel series Good Morning Miss Bliss, and the show follows a group of high school friends and their principal. Primarily focused on lighthearted comedic situations, it occasionally touches on serious social issues too, such as drug use, driving under the influence, homelessness, remarriage, death, women's rights, and environmental issues as well. It was essentially a comedy show for kids that attempted to teach lessons sometimes too. Most importantly though, Saved by the Bell had a cool and endearing cast who went on to become teen icons and later for some, even adult stars in Hollywood as well. Most kids like myself, we wanted to be Zach Morris, the smart aleck, always scheming main character who was so cool, he had a wireless mobile phone before those were even a thing. In addition, A.C. Slater was the more burly jock character and Screech was the nerdy younger sidekick one. They were all accompanied by three girls in the main cast too who were all 
striking and went on to become teen heartthrobs and crushes for the young boys out there watching at the time. The show also spawned two spin-off series, Saved by the Bell The College Years and Saved by the Bell The New Class, and also it spurred two TV movies which starred the main cast as well. All in all, this show clearly became a fan favorite and influenced many things that came after it. Saved by the Bell swept the early 90s by storm and the late 90s too through reruns and also the sequel series that aired constantly. Now, with all that said, I think we could start to see why the show getting a woke reboot now is becoming problematic. Not only was it wildly popular and much beloved for generations, but also Saved by the Bell mostly targeted children audiences, especially in the early years. So to see a new woke reboot coming out can obviously make some worried, like myself. Are they going to be pushing this woke pro-alphabet people stuff into kids now hardcore? Because that's sure what it looks like it could be. And if it's anywhere near as bad as the woke pro-alphabet shows here on YouTube, like for example the one called Queer Kid Stuff, well, that was a disaster and the new Saved by the Bell will be too, if things are going to go the way they're looking now. Next, let's read more into the NBC article and story and get some more details about this sure-to-fail new reboot. The Saved by the Bell revival has found its lead. Josie Toda, who previously starred in Mindy Kaling's short-lived Champion series at NBC, has been cast to lead the series in the works at Peacock. The forthcoming NBCU streamer, set to launch in April, announced the revival back in September 2019, along with the news that original series cast members Mario Lopez and Elizabeth Berkley would be reprising their roles in addition to serving as producers. Well, that's nice that they're getting A.C. Slater and Jesse to return, but it's also not the best of signs. I know Zach Morris hasn't been known to return much to the show aside from a few cameos, but he was the main star and the signature character for the series. Screech also sort of became the breakout character for the show. Not because he was cool though, but rather he was nerdy and goofy but really hilarious. As for the girls, bringing Jesse back is bringing back one of the least popular ones too. Everyone knows Kelly Kapowski was the de facto female lead and also the best looking of the bunch. Heck, the black chick Lisa Turtle was even more popular than Jesse. And actually, you know what? Even Mr. Belding, the principal, was more popular than her. Basically, what I'm trying to say is they're bringing back the secondary least like characters just cause. Just cause they want to try and tie this revival back to the originals, which makes me think the new show is going to be even more terrible and very likely a train wreck. Remember, this is going to air as one of the first shows on the NBC streaming service too. Now, some initial shows on these services have been great, don't get me wrong, but those are all coming from Netflix, Hulu, Disney, and Apple, none of which have their own direct networks on television, aside from Hulu being owned by Disney, who also owns the ABC network. Regardless, the point is, if NBC was really competent about this new Saved by the Bell reboot show, they would put it on television on their main network, but instead, it's getting sent to the Peacock streamer, along with some of the original show's lesser-known characters, who are apparently just happy to have work offered to them. Here's the log line for the revival. When California Governor Zach Morris gets into hot water for closing too many low-income high schools, he proposes they send the affected students to the highest performing schools in the state, including Bayside High. The influx of new students gives the overprivileged Bayside kids a much-needed and hilarious dose of reality. Toto will play the role of Lexi, who is described as a beautiful, sharp-tongued cheerleader and the most popular girl at Bayside High, who is both admired and feared by her fellow students. Great News creator Tracy Wigfield is serving as a writer, executive producer on the show, and Peter Agel and Franco Barrio also on board as EPs. The series hails from Universal Television. Okay, well, admittedly, the premise presented here doesn't seem too bad so far. Doesn't sound incredibly woke from that little bit either, but I doubt things won't eventually go there, especially considering the show's track record for trying to teach lessons to kids and stuff. I highly doubt they will be able to resist going full-blown pro-alphabet in SJW, at least after a few episodes. I can already see an episode happening where this main character played by Jory Toda, well, she's probably going to come out as alphabet or something, or talk about how she's dealt with it or whatever. And really, the only chance I think a show like this could have is if they ignore the fact that their main actor is T altogether. Not that that's anything to be ashamed of or to hate on, of course it's not, but it's also not necessarily something that needs to be bragged about and promoted and never let go of, which seems to be the way things are going now. In reality, as I've stated before, proclaiming your T should have an end date on it. If you're really transitioning, there should come to be a point where that transformation is complete, and now you've become the gender you wanted to be, and you no longer need to claim alphabet victimhood. I might not have even known this actor was alphabet at all if they didn't feel the need to bring it up as a way to promote this new show, which is really what should have us all worried about this whole project going full-blown SJW. Perhaps it won't either. I could just be a little gun-shy from this happening 
happening over and over again before, and I'll happily admit I jumped the gun, if that's the case too. If that's really how this plays out, but I highly doubt it. Toda, who also previously starred in Glee and Spider-Man Homecoming, came out as transgender in a Time essay published in 2018. She most recently recurred in the Netflix series No Good Nick. Toda is rep by WME and Rise Management. Also in the works at Peacock is a Battlestar Galactica revival with Mr. Robot creator Sam Esmail executive producing in a Punky Brewster sequel series. The Hollywood Reporter first reported the news. Well, that's a short section, but it makes me think of a lot of different things. First things first, now that I realize who this actor was, some side character from Spider-Man Homecoming, well, this goes to show and prove I was right about this so-called transition. Whether or not it was already wanted or genuine hardly matters as much as the fact that once Toda became Alphabet, they started getting more attention and work in Hollywood. They went from some nameless side character to speaking and leading roles, virtually overnight too. In addition, these other revivals mentioned coming from NBC raise other questions and thoughts from me too. Like, why do they keep just rebooting, reviving, and revamping everything? I wish we could at least hear about one original idea or series from them today. Bringing back Battlestar Galactica is particularly worrisome too since the last series only ended about 10 years ago. And also, it was one of the greatest shows with one of the best TV endings of all time. Quite a tough act to follow to say the least and they certainly could ruin the legacy of that show if they screw up the new one. But with the Punky Brewster show coming back, that raises some different kinds of questions and issues for me. First, the show, while famous, wasn't particularly big or important or groundbreaking. It was a B or C level sitcom from the 80s, among many. And this makes me think NBC is even more desperate for content now, if that's even possible. Next, and here's the big question of the day. I wonder if the makers of this new show would ever consider gender swapping the characters of it. I think we all know the answer is no because it's female-led, but it is fun to ask because it does expose the hypocrisy and biasness of the woke culture running Hollywood today. They will gladly make lady reboots and gender swap male characters anytime, like what's happening with Saved by the Bell. But when it comes time to possibly return the favor and make a formerly girl-led project into a male-led one, well, that pretty much never happens. Punky Brewster, of course, is led by its female title character. So in theory, NBC could reboot it with a dude this time and then they could claim it was a good way to mix things up and flip the script, which is what they pretend to be doing when they lady reboot things. But we know that will never happen because things only get rebooted and swapped when they were previously male-led. Girl-led projects are basically untouchable and if we even thought about making them male-led now, we'd probably be laughed out of the producer's meeting room. And even, it would make us blackballed from ever working in Tinseltown again. What do you guys think? Are you interested in watching a woke Saved by the Bell reboot? Are these streaming services as desperate for content as they look to me? And do you think a female-led series will ever get a male reboot in 2020? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.